morning everyone day two here in nebraska september 2nd i'm gonna go wake ethan up here and we're gonna head into a spot that's about two miles back in and it's uh, a little bit lower down in the in a bottom close to a kind of an overgrown thick bedding area and you really need a, a really light westerly wind to hunt it effectively i feel like we can slip in and, and get ahead of the deer and uh, have a good chance of catching them coming back off the tops and, and down into the bottom of the bed. So should see some deer this morning. Yesterday wasn't uh, wasn't too productive, but I got a good feeling about this morning's hunt. If it's anything like it was last year, we should have deer coming by within bow range. Kind of wore ourselves out yesterday. <laughs> Jake and I put on about 10 miles between the morning hunt and the evening hunt. And I actually got blisters on my feet. So I got to toughen up. Here we go. I saw it over there. I've never been that close to one. Got a leaf in his mouth. So it's a real thick bedding behind us and this creek bottom runs for a long ways and then it eventually ends where all the ag fields are on top, corn, soybeans, alfalfa, catching deer moving back through here, going back to bed down in this bottom. I think we got in ahead of them. We didn't spook anything as far as we know. We didn't hear anything ahead of us. Nice cool morning in the upper 40s. It takes a deer a while to get back in here. Last year we were seeing deer pretty much all morning long until 9, 30, 10 o'clock. We're just consistently moving through here. As long as the wind stays down like this, I think we'll be good. Just as we cut in here, we saw a scrape just 25 yards from where we're at. So that is a good sign. We better get set up. Just hang tight for a few minutes and watch and listen. I need you to watch back this way mostly because I've got these three big cottonwoods in my way but you can see farther back up in there. So I can hide really well, which is good. But the disadvantage for you is once they get close, I can see them all day long. And I got a wide open shot right here, but we're gonna have to communicate and you'll have to let me know. You know you're filming between these two big cottonwoods. You'll have to let me know as soon as they get into frame. It looks like a doe or a small buck just browsing in that grapevine or sumac or whatever that is. Just going to town on that grapevine. Well, well, Ethan and I are all set up and ready to go. We're set up in this cluster of cottonwood trees right down in the middle of this creek bottom with the dry creek bed that's running right below the stand. There's just kind of this nice little open pocket right here. And there's trails coming off the hills. There's trails coming down through the creek bottom just crisscrossing through this open area. Right here, right here. Yeah, buck, big buck. Bop, bop, bop. What the heck? Obviously spooked. He wasn't going to stop. Big eight-pointer. Good grief to be spooked like that. I mean, it would have had to been some kind of predator or another hunter. I can't imagine there's another.
just not not a guarantee that that buck was going to walk within bow range, but there was a really good chance. Well, like I said, basically every deer that we saw up there last year ended up within bow range of this spot. He's on the prowl, doing the same thing as we are this morning, doing some hunting. He just picked a bad time to come through here. <laughs> Another deer. He just spooked. No, it's the coyote. The coyote was just running through there. I don't know if it was chasing a rabbit. He was coming right at us, then he just turned him over, went right back. Uh, definitely helping our cause, though. There he is up there again. I mean, he's just running through here. I was hoping he's just going to keep going, but he ran right back up to where I'd expect the deer to come from. Got her there. What about that one? Okay, just so I know. Still gotta just hang tight and not move too much. Okay. That spike hasn't gone far.
but Just zip right through him. I don't know if I was a touch back. I mean, I was twisting around to get the shot, and I was just about out of room. Oh, my shoulders are just burning. But man, at that distance, I should have just smoked him. I don't know. I guess we're gonna have to look at the footage. It's, that was a cool buck. He's got some character. I was just waiting for him to turn broadside. Finally, he started to turn, I came to full draw. And then he was still quartering towards me. At that point, he kind of had his shoulder back. And I was at full draw for, you know, I don't know how long. My shoulders were starting to burn. And finally, he made the move and started working broadside. And I swung around the tree a little bit more. And at that distance, I should have just tangeringed him. I mean, he should have fallen within sight. That's totally my fault. Yeah, I mean, I watched him as far as I could, but it gets pretty thick back there. He's a really cool deer. Super good. Yeah, brow, brow tying and crap. some character. Like just a cool buck, just a nice buck for you know doing a trip like this, where you have just a short amount of time to hunt. Comes in close like that, and yeah, wait and see. Well, just found the arrow, and it's not good. Not good at all. If you watch the shot and you're thinking, what the heck was that? I'm thinking the same thing. We watched it back on the camera and then on our phones. And because of the leaves in the way, because of the shadows, at first we thought it was tighter to the shoulder and a better shot. And then I got up here and found the arrow and there's stomach matter on it. I apologize for that. That is just, that's the worst feeling right there. It's 10.30 right now. I'm just gonna have to give it time. Hitting a deer far back like that. Time is not our ally today. Because it's gonna get hot. We should have been high five and celebrating and dragging a deer out by now, but instead, we've got a lot of uncertainty ahead. Well, we're headed back to camp right now. Not feeling good about this at all but we'll look at it on the laptop and be able to get a little bit better feel for where exactly the arrow hit but based on what we saw in the LCD and based on the arrow it looks like it's low and far back but I just wouldn't think at that distance and from what I thought I saw from the shot where I thought I saw the arrow enter what I heard with the, the sound of the arrow hitting the deer it's just not making a lot of sense right now so we're gonna go meet up with Jake look at the footage and hopefully have a little bit better feel after that. Wait, what the heck? <laughs> that don't look too bad That's to what I thought. I thought it was good. Well, that's, his, that's his shoulder blade right there. I mean, it's it? a lot higher than what That's way I higher thought. than what I thought. That's right where you want it up and down. It might be just a hair back. We're not trying to pull something on you here. Like I, <laughs> no, I, 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 mean, I can tell by at, your face. Look at the arrow. It. The arrow was because I was thinking it was back here. Yeah. It literally it looked really, like that. Really, we thought it was the right The frame here. before that, it, I mean, it yeah. looks like it, like it's going for what you explained to me. It was that shadow too that messed it up. Yeah, it looks like it, it's not like right on the shoulder, but as far well, as that's not like it's super super low. Yeah, I mean, it is, is good. much better than what I was originally thinking. by frame and see if we can see a whole 
you can see it there before. So I'm guessing but, he was just slightly quartered to just very little bit and maybe your exit is a little further or a little further back than your entry, but I mean yeah. the good news is like he didn't have any clue what was going on either. No. So like, right. he's, not, he's probably not gonna go very far well, that's, regardless of that's the hope. Down. That is the hope. And there is water close by there. Well how's that make you feel? A little better? Better, for sure. This whole time, the last three hours, I could not figure out how I could have hit that far back. Like, yeah, it just, didn't just make sense. completely dumbfounded. Shot of that. Understood. All right, well, after looking at the footage on the laptop here, I feel a little bit better about the shot. Still should have been farther forward, tucked it tight into that, you know, into that V, into that pocket where the you know, the heart and the major vessels are. What I remember from the shot, I thought he was perfectly broadside. I thought I saw the arrow disappear behind his shoulder, heard that good pop, you know, from a chest cavity hit. And when the deer stopped after 30 yards, I thought he was gonna tip over. But when he hunched up a little bit and then he trotted off again and really didn't act like he was hurt that bad, that's when I got concerned. But we stayed quiet and watched and listened. And then uh, we watched the footage back on the screen. You know, the last thing we thought we could see it was that the arrow was low and far back and you can see it we'll show you on on the laptop here you can tell what we were seeing you can see that lighted knot going across through the sun and it looks like it impacts a deer low and back you know at that point i decided just to get down and look at the arrow and see what that had to tell me and when i picked the arrow up and it had pretty much nothing but stomach matter on it and my heart just sank but after looking at it on the laptop we can obviously see that the last frame where the arrow enters a deer you can see the lighted knock a couple inches behind the shoulder and uh, the height was good though. So what we're thinking is it's lung, liver, and the exit of the front part of the stomach. And that's what the arrow indicates as well. There's a little bit of dark blood on it, which would be consistent with a liver hit. And then, you know, it's coated mostly in stomach matter, which was the last thing that it passed through. So the good thing is, I think it's a better shot than what we thought it was while we were in the tree. The bad thing is there's probably not gonna be much of a blood trail. I didn't see very much on the, on the ground. The exit hole is probably gonna be plugged. The positive is that arrow zipped right through him and he didn't really act like he knew that he'd been hit. So I don't think he's gonna go very far. I think we'll find the deer, but it always seems like when you're the person that makes a shot, you're more, more pessimistic than everybody else. Jake thinks we're good to go. Ethan's feeling better about it. But at this point, I'll think we'll get him. I just still, there's a sense of disappointment that I didn't make a better shot when he's at, at that close to the range. But he's a cool buck though. I mean, he's got several character points. You could see that when he was coming in. I mean, he's not a particularly old deer, but he's a cool buck. That's the tree we were in. That small one, that one. Okay, Ethan would have been filming on this line right here. So there's that tree with the vines hanging down. So he was standing right up there. the video back I don't know how many different times we got it lined up this was the last place we could see him and there's the first bit of blood that we found since impact mark that on on X yeah
And if you try to pick apart the blood trail, hands and knees, it may take so long that you well, yeah, never even get anywhere. Right again, it's like it's not that thick, you know. I feel like if you walked it, you could find him for sure. Yeah. You should kind of circle it that way and be safe. With the wind, yeah, that's that's what I was go back there a ways, and then if you're up there, if we happen to push him that way, you may be able to see him. The box right here. The box right here. Dead? Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Ethan. You're welcome. Nice job. Oh. Thanks, boys. Yes. Congrats. In the shade too. That's I could good. smell. I could smell. It smelled like buck right there. He didn't go that far, at least from where we found that last bit of blood. Just mm -hmm. turned the corner and... Yeah, I mean, probably oh, 60, 80 man. yards from where we last found <sighs> Okay, well, that's over now. I heard you guys yell first. I'm like, uh-oh, he's because he said buck or something. I was like, uh-oh, he's getting up. Oh, look at the character on this thing. <laughs> look at that. Look at all the points. That's awesome, man. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah, I didn't yeah, even. I cool. wasn't even really looking at his antlers. I was more looking at the shot. That brow kind's crazy looking. <laughs> you relieved a little bit? Yeah, <laughs> I, man. I wish I'd have made a better shot. I feel terrible about that. I'm just I'm, really glad he was in the shade. Yep. Like yeah, it was, it's cool down here. It is. And he's been dead for quite some time. Yeah, he's like stiff. September two. That's the earliest deer I've ever shot. It's tagged. I don't know. I I was telling well, on the way in. I was saying that this is like the craziest hunt I've ever been on. But to be the first one that I like really did and got to film it was like saw a porcupine. Then we had the coyote <laughs> incident. Then we, there was we had like eight deer real close. And then we had the buck come in. We weren't gonna shoot it. Then he ended up shooting it like eight yards. And then we had the roller coaster of that. Truly like the emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said earlier, it's such a cliche term, but kind of bizarre the way we thought, you know, looking back in the camera that it was, the shot would have been like way low and yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. And we got back to the campground and looked at the computer and it's like, oh, well, holy cow, it's, it's not, not, that, not bad. that bad. And it really, I mean, it's two and a half, three inches yeah. back from the shoulder and height is about right. Yeah. But apparently he was slightly quartering towards yeah and I, the I shots didn't recognize exactly that. are pretty much exactly where you'd want it to be if he was perfectly broadside but i mean i mean it's happened to me in the past too the yeah. week. i mean we yeah. had we've had several hits really similar to this where it's like must have just slightly been quartered if you don't have footage that you were talking about this to ethan yesterday we we're just kind of going through i mean just stuff you need to know when filming a hunt but this is just knowledge for bow hunting or just hunting in general is like after the shot, don't freak out. Don't start yelling or screaming or anything. Like, just watch and listen until you know for sure that it's down or you, like, give it several minutes. Like, yeah. And just listening and, I mean, any clue you might get um, as far as noise that they make or movement you catch is going to help you recover the animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It re yeah, that was huge, really. Mm -hmm. To be able to line up exactly, you know, where he was. And it, like, it eventually got, the where we found the first blood was exactly where we last had footage of him. And if we didn't have that footage, if you would have pulled off for, who knows how long it would have taken us to find mm -hmm. him. I, I, I have confidence that we would have found it, but it would have taken a lot longer time. Yeah, right? or even just taking your phone and, like, you know, yep. taking a, a snapshot of where you last saw him quick yeah. so you can remember it, because everything looks so different from the ground, or, you know, you got the adrenaline flowing, things just kind of go haywire sometimes. Yep. Worked out, plan worked out, that little creek bottom. Yeah, it was. We saw scrapes as we were going in close to the stand, and then as we were tracking them, there was a bunch of rubs. It was cool for me when we got in there. I think I think when we sat down, we were about right at sunrise, so we had about 30 minutes of legal light that we had been fiddling around in the tree and everything. It took a while to get set yeah, up. Yeah, and it was just, it was cool that we were 
close enough to the bedding and the deer were coming off the food that we, we beat them to where they were going to be and we had a little bit of free time to get up in the tree and get set up and I've messed that up before where I've been either too close to the food or too far from the bedding and you're on top of deer as soon as you're in there. But you know, I don't know if it was just the day or the spot, but it was cool to get up there and have a little bit of time before the deer started filtering back in. And then you shot this deer at 9 a.m. And I don't think a lot of people early season are used to shooting bucks in the morning at 9 a.m. Sure. I mean, that's mm -hmm. cool. Um, that in the right spot, you can do that. Yeah, I definitely don't purposely try to be set up, but finally set up 30 minutes after legal shooting time. <laughs> right. but I wasn't stressing too much. Working be out the early season kinks. Oh yeah, <laughs> getting all the gear set up, getting the camera arm set up, trying to get you familiar with it. Your Sorry, first time ever out. hunting in a saddle. <laughs> yeah, it feels good to finally wrap a tag around another Nebraska buck. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time coming. We got some work to do. I'm glad you're still here, Jake. Me too. I think I Zach actually, is coming to pick you up I sometime actually, soon. Yeah, I love this. This is my favorite part, so I'm excited to cut him up. Oh, that's instantly just hot. Yeah. Figure out exactly what happened here on the shot. I think we already know, probably back of the lung, liver, stomach, but we'll check it out. Did a good job. <laughs> okay. Did better than I was. <laughs> okay. Oh, what we got here? That thing's not doing so well. <laughs> it's like a plastic frame what it is. Good observation. <laughs> Speaking of observations, people may be wondering why it is 90 degrees today and you're wearing a knit cap. <laughs> or have we already been over this? No, I don't think we have. You wore um, it the whole time in South Dakota too. Yeah, warmer, warmer well I forgot that. my ball cap, I guess you'd call it. My girlfriend crocheted it, so I was like, why not? It's got some blood on it now, so. Broke in. Broke in and really have had some pretty good success with the hat. These interns we get, we get a bucket hat yeah. kid and then we get a knit cap kid. <laughs> Feel bad. I guess I we're going to be selling those on our website next year. <laughs> yeah, knit I cap. doubt it. Your girlfriend's going to be gr busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice when you shoot them in the morning. Let's go back, go. shower, and make some dinner actually. Yeah. Dylan said there's steak dinner on them tonight. I don't know if we're going to be back in time, but yeah. Well, we'll be back in time if there's steak dinner. Blister popped. Tire popped. I felt it for a while. I've been hobbling, trying to keep the weight off of it, tried to cut my foot, not put pressure on it, but it went. <laughs> Greg won't let Gooch take the pack, which I don't blame him. Made it. Barely. Just need a tire patch kit. <sighs> Pardon my dirty feet. <laughs> I don't get them on the bottom very often. Do you yeah. get them there sometimes? Uh huh. I usually get them on the heel. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever had one on the heel. I'll take a blister for oh, yeah. that any day. Any <sighs> sweat equity, eh? Maybe you'll get a tag in September then. Maybe. We are starting to earn it. No. Matt is actually going to try as much ground hunting as he possibly can. In western North Dakota? Yep. I can't imagine where he would. <laughs> I'm heading out. North Dakota opens at noon tomorrow, correct? Correct. He got there this morning. He probably scouted some. And, uh, then we'll do some scouting in the morning probably and we'll be hunting tomorrow. That's, That's it enough. for Nebraska. Yeah. Been a good time. Short, Pretty short, quick. short but sweet. Yeah. So hopefully Aaron and Ted are listening to some screaming bulls right now. Maybe they're tagged out. They just don't have any service, so we really don't have any idea. <laughs> Maybe they're just mad at us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>